talk to you about something near and dear to my heart. I had a friend named John Lewis. John made a statement that we should get into some good trouble. Now the question is, how can trouble be good? When you think about something that is troublesome, good doesn't match that. But when you think about something that's good, trouble doesn't necessarily go with good. So here we have this contradiction of what is good trouble. Moreover, if you are going to have good trouble, disruption will be part of that. Now I beg to share with you that there is power in disruption. And when you experience that power of being a disruptor, you're at this intersection where things become pivotal, where you can actually make a change, where the status quo now can be challenged, is broken. And when you get into some good trouble, you probably are doing something that others don't deem to be all that good but it will be effective. As I think about what John shared, and I think about the legacy that came with it, and you're doing something that is so problematic, you have to ask yourself, what is my purpose? You know, the definition for disruption I like to call it shaking things up, but as you can see, it's, you're disturbing and interrupting what's present in an event. Now, for some of you, the events that you experience, the events that are problematic, could be rooted in something as simple as racism, where someone simply doesn't like you because of the color of your skin. They don't judge you by the content of your character, or something else that could be a problem for you could be sexism. Is it simply because you're a male or you're a female? And when those things are problematic in your life, are you being disturbed now simply because someone was born in a gender or they chose a gender that doesn't match how they were born? Or perhaps maybe you are disturbed by someone's sexual identity. Could you find it problematic that now that the person that's giving you orders is someone that you feel you should be taking orders from? And you see, as we stop thinking and, and think about what makes me uncomfortable, the chances are that what is making you uncomfortable, if it's not good for one, is it really good for everyone else? Probably not. Now, as you can see, it's the next slide, is that your presence gives us the ability to pivot. As a matter of fact, when you make the decision to let your will be done, thy will be done, you have the power and the possibility and the potential to change and be part of disruption. You have an opportunity to get in some good trouble because, see, when I think about that word will, typically when we leave a will, it's a set of instructions about how things are going to be governed in one's absence. But then there's the other definition where will, often followed by the word power, has a great deal to do with fortitude. Often we hear the word will and it brings about inheritance. But I want to challenge you. What are you leaving behind for someone else to inherit? Maybe because you were a little timid and a little fearful of disrupting something. You did not want to, you know, break up the event, shake up the status quo. You forsook your power and then you chose to just kind of let things just go as they always go. But see, 
if we're going to get into some good trouble, the next thing that you're going to find is that this paradigm shift you've created will now shift someone else's paradigm. I can think of being a troublemaker. I remember my mama used to, I know y'all know this speech, if, if you are a person from the South, I don't care what your race is, you probably remember this before you left out the house to go to the store. Now don't you go in here showing out. And you better not run over my heel with that basket. You remember that, right? Well, the truth is, that applies to a child. You're not a child anymore. And as an adult, it is time to put away childish things. It's time for you to pick up a mantle and accept that maybe, maybe if I just choose to use the power of disruption and if I choose to become a troublemaker, maybe you can transform your environment. You know, I, had a, I have a distant relative. He's, um, he was the first mayor of, black mayor of Atlanta, UN ambassador, a guy named Andrew Young. Andrew had a friend, dear friend, named Martin Luther King. Martin made a statement that I found quite significant. He said, you know, we will, we have a choice. We can live together as brothers and sisters, or we can perish together as fools. You see, they chose to be architects of being in the midst of a tumultuous second civil war that war on civil rights. But see, when you do that and you make a decision to use the power of disruption to get in some good trouble, that's the birthing place, that's the birthing stool for change and transformation. Will we live together as brothers and sisters or will we forsake that and perish together as fools? There's some parts to our identities. There's the lower self. I like to refer to that as the id. If you can imagine a man riding a horse and the horse is just going wherever he wants to go. When the man refuses to exercise control, that is the id. That is the lower self. Are we allowing our basic instincts to guide us? And then there's that middle, that ego self, the acquiescent self. That's the part of you that cares more about how things look than how things are. But see, there's this higher self, the part of you that is spirit. The part of you that is more than what meets the eye. You see, if I go to the ocean, I can take a pail and get some water out. But what was in the ocean is in the pail. But then I can look back at that ocean and I can look at the pail and see what is in my pail is in that ocean and see you come from source you are of that source the source you have power you know not of but it doesn't mean anything if you don't use it if you choose to avoid if you choose to acquiesce but today I challenge you challenge you to go get into some good trouble. I, ch I challenge you to choose the power of disruption. See, when we seek the highest self, what you see in yourself, you see in others. So, as you've done to the least of these, you've done unto yourself. The one thing that I want you to ask yourself today is not just who am I, but what am I? Are you part of the problem? By you not speaking up, by you not standing up, 
Is your silence an implied endorsement? It's time to make a change. And my challenge to you as my colleagues and I today challenge you to be a sphere of influence as we challenge you today to remember that because of you, all things are possible, providing that you are willing to use the power of disruption and to get into some good trouble. I'm Dr. D. Yvonne Young. Thank you.